Have you ever imagined that, with just three people and a handmade machine, you could manage over 3,000 plots of rice fields? Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? But this isn't fiction. It's a true story, happening not in California or Texas, but in the wet, rural farmlands of the Mekong Delta, deep in southern Vietnam, far from cities, far from advanced machinery. Welcome to a truly unique journey where Vietnamese farmers aren't waiting around for high-tech miracles. They create their own miracle with their bare hands, their minds, and relentless persistence. In today's video, you'll witness how a homemade tractor, assembled using nothing more than salvaged parts and local materials, has empowered three men to achieve something incredible. And more than that, We'll explore how this story compares to agriculture in the U.S., a country with advanced technology, but facing many of the same challenges. Let's take a closer look at this machine. It's not flashy. There's no big brand logo, no GPS, no moisture sensors, no AI-based autopilot, but it Whoa! works, and it works surprisingly well. The front wheels come from a single axle tractor, the rear wheels are tracks repurposed from an old rice harvester, perfect for navigating muddy terrain. In the back, it's powered by a 77.5 horsepower Kubota engine, strong enough to haul an enormous rice bin while driving steadily across the field. That bin alone can hold nearly 20 plots worth of harvested rice, almost the size of a full cargo truck. Up front, one person steers with a simple mechanical wheel. Think vintage Jeep style. At the rear, another person controls the grain flow, manually, with a wooden stick. A third helps manage overall operations, safety, and troubleshooting. Now, here's the big question for you. Can we, here in the US, learn something from this model? We have John Deere. We have autonomous tractors. We have drones spraying fertilizers with AI. But all that comes at a price, a very high price. Initial investment, huge. Maintenance costly and complex. And worst of all, many small farms simply can't afford to access this level of technology. Meanwhile, what are these Vietnamese farmers doing? They don't have big budgets. They don't have warehouses of spare parts. But they do have creativity, flexibility, and an intimate understanding of their land. They see a broken down machine, not as junk, but as a foundation. They don't ask, why isn't it working? They ask, how can I make this useful again? That's a whole different mindset. Here in the US, the number of farmers is shrinking. Farm sizes are getting larger. Over in Vietnam, agriculture remains more community-based. That community spirit encourages collaboration, resource sharing, and innovation on the ground. Think about it. If a machine costing just a few thousand dollars can do the work of 10 to 15 people, if it's easy to maintain, easy to adapt, why do we need to spend hundreds of thousands? Shouldn't technology adapt to the realities of each region instead of forcing farmers to adapt to the machines? Back to this incredible machine built by three Vietnamese farmers. It's not just for spreading rice. After harvest season, it becomes a fertilizer spreader. Need to transport tools or supplies. It becomes a cargo hauler, moving rice, straw, farming tools. One machine, multiple purposes, few operators, low cost. No engineer required, no expensive diagnostic software, just a screwdriver, a wrench kit, and a little hands-on experience. That's not primitive. That's intelligent. Just in a different way. We live in a digital age. But not everyone needs bleeding-edge tech. Sometimes all you need is the right solution for the right situation. Can you feel the value in that? Imagine this machine showing up on a small farm in Iowa or Arkansas. Would it save time? Reduce costs? lower dependency on hired labor. Given today's labor shortages, the answer is yes. Most likely, yes. Vietnam is transitioning 
From traditional farming to something more modern. But modernization here doesn't mean throwing money at problems. It means adapting. Adapting to labor scarcity. Adapting to climate change, floods, land shortages, and shifting seasons. And from that pressure, they create. On the flip side, in the US, where technology is highly advanced, maybe what we need more of is flexibility, simplicity, and that hands-on DIY spirit. Now, you might be thinking, okay, cool story, but is this really something that would work here in America? It's a fair question. And the answer? It's not black and white. But one thing is clear. The lessons of creativity, cost efficiency, and turning the impossible into possible. Those lessons are universal. Whether you're farming in Missouri or in the Mekong Delta, we all face the same question. How do we do more with less? And that is the takeaway today. You don't need the perfect setup to begin. Start with what you have. You don't need million dollar tech. You need a mindset willing to innovate. If you found this machine inspiring, drop a comment. Could this low cost creative farming model work in your area? Or have you seen similar DIY solutions in your community? Let us know because sometimes the key to sustainable farming lies not in complexity, but in simplicity. Have you ever wondered how small-scale farmers in developing regions innovate when they don't have access to modern agricultural machinery? Today, we're exploring a remarkable example from the rice fields of Vietnam, where a group of local farmers have built their own pesticide-spraying vehicle from scratch. This isn't just a story of DIY engineering. It's a story of resilience, creativity, and smart problem-solving with lessons that are valuable far beyond Southeast Asia. At first glance, the machine looks like a hybrid between a rice harvester and a small utility vehicle. It rides on a set of compact rubber tracks, the kind you'd see on mini excavators, making it ideal for soft, waterlogged fields where wheels would easily sink. The body is lightweight, built from welded steel, and just wide enough to cover a standard two-row paddy lane without damaging the crops. Powering the unit is a diesel engine, a rugged single-cylinder Hino motor adapted from other agricultural equipment. While the engine isn't flashy, it's chosen for one reason, reliability. It runs smoothly, consumes minimal fuel, and is easy to maintain with basic tools. This engine delivers enough torque to power both propulsion and the pressurized spraying mechanism, even when the machine is fully loaded. The spray system is what sets this machine apart. A flexible network of PVC pipes distributes pesticide evenly across the spray booms. Each boom extends outward, adjustable both in height and width, depending on the maturity and spacing of the rice. Nozzle heads are spaced at calibrated intervals to optimize spray coverage while minimizing waste. A key concern when working with costly chemicals. At the rear, a large tank typically 200 to 300 liters, stores the liquid solution, which is pulled up by a manual or electric pump, depending on the design. Operating the vehicle is surprisingly straightforward. One operator handles steering from a simple mechanical tiller or wheel, while another monitors spray pressure, flow control, and ensures the booms don't hit obstacles in the field. Steering is responsive, and the rubber tracks allow tight turning radii, a crucial feature for small, irregular shaped fields that are common in Southeast Asia. The most impressive feature? This entire setup can be run by just two people, a father and son, two farmhands, even an older farmer and his teenage apprentice. No large crews, no heavy logistics, just ingenuity and hands-on work. And the result? One of these machines can cover up to 20 acres a day, depending on terrain and tank capacity. To recap the technical features, drive system, dual rubber track with mechanical controls, engine, single cylinder diesel, approximately 10 to 15 horsepower, spray width, adjustable, typically two to four meters, tank capacity, 
200 to 300 liters. Materials, repurposed steel, PVC, old pump systems. Required operators, one to two people. Because it's built from reclaimed materials, the environmental footprint is surprisingly low. Most of the frame and components are salvaged from old tractors, harvesters, and industrial scrap, giving new life to what would otherwise be waste. It's an elegant example of upcycling in a setting where both money and materials are limited. But beyond the specs, what really matters is the story behind the machine. It's the story of a farming culture that doesn't wait for outside help. It adapts and builds with what's available. It's a reminder that innovation doesn't always require million-dollar labs or Silicon Valley funding. Sometimes, it just takes a welding torch, some pipe fittings, and the will to solve a real-world problem. If you're working in agricultural technology, rural development, or just love stories of clever engineering, this is one worth remembering. What could we learn from this kind of grassroots innovation? How can we adapt similar thinking to small farms in the U.S., where equipment costs and labor shortages are rising every year? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Share your own DIY farming stories. And subscribe if you want more real-world agri-tech stories from across the globe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next field.